two guesses as to what we're doing today, and the first guess doesn't count. In case you didn't read the title or see the thumbnail, we're finally at a stage where we have to do something about these shin knockers. We have to find a way to make them look like they were part of the car, they're tailored fit to the car. Uh, I'm missing a bunch of chrome that kind of helped them do that. Around here, there was some pieces that came down. This is sitting a little low because it's so darn heavy. Actually, I got one bolt over here and one bolt over here. That's why it's kind of lopsided. Uh, normally, it's on two bolts on both sides. This side here seems to be fitting up a little bit better. Uh, something's, something's off. Either the bumper bracket, and I'm thinking the bumper bracket is bent because if you look here, there's a big dent in the bumper and there's some good thing going on down here as well. It must have hit the body before we fixed it. And the center's caved in. So there's something twisted. We gotta figure out what that something is. We're not gonna be restoring them. We're not gonna be re-chroming them. I'm gonna tell you that up front. Uh, that's not what I'm about here with this project. To re-chrome these bumpers, I'd have to sell my left kidney. We're not about to do that. I need that thing. So what we're gonna do is tailor fit these to the car. The license plate used to sit up here. I'm gonna relocate it down below. To hang it down here, flip down with a motorized flapper, it's a little too low. We've removed the bumper guards that used to sit up here, give a nice streamlined look. And I wanna keep this top surface continuous from, from end to end, from side to side. So what I'm thinking to do, what I'm going to do, is remove a section from the lower area. That'll fix the dent that we have here and it'll allow us to put a license plate light up inside and recess this license plate in behind in such a way that it doesn't hit you in the face when you bend down to look at this bumper. The bumper will hit you. Uh, I've got some old lines here, I have to transpose them down, cut in, cut down. We're not gonna cut into this main feature line here, I wanna keep that continuous. To get these bumpers tucked up into place so I don't have to use a piece of trim down here, we need to adjust the flanges on the bodywork so that this bumper will sit closer to the body. And then we'll do what we need to do with sheet metal to make it look pretty. Over here you can see the bumper's a little bit higher, I mentioned that. And if I push it up like that, I'm actually hitting the tail light up, up inside. So I had to trim the top of the bumper to have that sit up in there. And then we, like I said, we have to rearrange these flanges so that it rolls in all the way. And then we'll bolt it tight. Uh, we also have to center from side to side, but we'll bolt it tight and take a look at it that way. But you can see how much better that looks. This will come up a little, a little bit higher. My finger was in there. That'll come up a little bit higher and you see the difference between that and that right there. Now the body is gonna be sitting on some rubber mounts, so we have to take that into account as well. There's a lot of variables to think about. You can see the smoke up there. This side here, there is something funny, so I'm gonna have to break out the uh, gas axe and just use the heating feature to adjust that bumper bracket in such a way that it allows the bumper to come back up. Finally, these points, if you stand back and look at the profile of the car, it looks like it's got a load in its diaper. It's, it's hanging down. So what I'm gonna do, and I'll outline this with tape, is cut down through here and suck this point in. Just tuck it in a little bit so it comes down off the tail light and then returns in roughly the same angle as, yeah, I can see this side's tweaked a bit more than over here. So roughly the same angle as this service 
and that should look a little better. I did a few drawings, I liked it in the drawings, so we're gonna do it on the car. That'll also give us a chance to pound that thing out, because right now, to get in there, next to impossible. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward here, literally, because all we're doing is dropping a line down from the top, down to the bottom, oops, if I can do a straight line, so there, we'll cut on that side. On the left side, we'll cut on the right side of the line. On the right side, we'll cut on the left side of the line. Do that. Now, we have to pick a point on this bumper. Let's look at this one. It's a little more fit to the taillight where it's gonna look good. So let's say a third. That's just eyeballing it for now. And I come up with a cut. Like that. Now as I'm outlining this, I'm thinking about how to approach this. Do we cut it right off? I mentioned we would, but I'm looking at it now. Might not need to. If we take and cut a wedge out of here, we can leave this surface undisturbed. And that'll save a lot of finishing work with that peak. We'll tuck that in, roll it in, whatever we have to do, but we'll leave this surface alone. We'll do one, and we'll try it. We'll do the good one. Yeah, that makes sense. You shouldn't be afraid to try something, you know. Go ahead and do it. Think it through. If it makes sense to you, go for it. That's what this chair is for. I've been sitting here planning. You get the tape line just right and it should be good. Yep, we're good. I'm taking my Sharpie and outline all this because with the heat created, this tape is just gonna fall right off and then I'm gonna lose this pretty artwork. Let's see. Three inches. Now this one's kind of weird because it's hanging down. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. Sometimes as you grind, your fasteners get loose and you end up with a little surprise on the floor. Come down eighth of an inch. Bang on. Okay. Let's make sure this fastener's in. There we go. What you hear there is a pin that I stuck through. It's a bolt. I stuck through the second hole. Because sometimes if you don't have somebody around to lift and hold something in place, you get a bolt or a pin or a broomstick or whatever. You kind of situate it. Yeah, there's something really weird with this body here. Holy moly. This corner is way up. And that one's way down. We'll get to the back to the pin in a minute. I'm gonna measure here, six and six. Let's call it six. Five and a half.
So this space here, from the edge of the trunk down to that feature there is six inches. Over here, it's five and a half from there to there. This piece was put in crooked. Even though we have that big space there, I'm not looking at that, I'm looking at this. And this is way out of whack. So that whole piece from end to end will be cut out and we'll fabricate a new one once we have this spacing here set. Uh, before I go cutting, those tail lights will come out so we don't damage them any further. They have a few hairline cracks, we gotta take care of them. One is cracks, we'll epoxy that. And as I was talking earlier, uh, there's a bolt here. I stick it in through the second hole. Like so, where'd you go? Like so. So I'll get the bumper up into place. I'll rest it on one pin. I'll get the bolt in on this side, the actual bolt, thread it in. Then I'll go over there and I'll do that bolt. And that pin that I put through temporarily holds the bumper in place. Let's look at that. Yeah, you see the angle of this plane and the green line? They are parallel. Let's do it before I lose my nerve. It's only metal, guys. You don't have to be scared about cutting it up. Inch and five eighths. Worst case, you just undo what you did and put it back. That front bumper came out really neat as to what we did with it. Okay, first, we're gonna outline this here. Down, around, I've used a plasma, but I think I already used a zip blade. Try the zip blade. Bumpers love to eat zip blades. You know, I'm rolling around in this chair. I just realized we can elevate things. Uh, uh, I'm shaking. We'll leave the tape there. Okay, done both sides. I'm gonna cut that side first, closer to you. That way I won't be able to hide my disappointment when it doesn't work out. <laughs> Always good to have a positive outlook. Oh yes, let us first remove these before I can't reach them. These taillights are overall complete and didn't make sense retrofitting some other thing in there. So, uh, I want to reuse them. I think Dodge had round taillights in that space, but this is a Chrysler, not a Dodge. Got one more line. The 
the horizontal. We cut along the bottom of that tape line right there because we're going to bend along the bottom of that tape line. Didn't want to create a sharp point for your shins to knock on. It'll be a softer sharp point when it gets rolled down underneath. See the damage? It's all bent up. Right, that's that is one eighth material. I thought it was 14 gauge. Ridiculous. That one or that one? That one. <laughs> we don't cut that. Before we go ahead and cut that side, let's take a look at this side. It seemed to have relieved itself, diaper, I don't know, but it shifted to one side. So I'm gonna see if I can get this opened up and shove it inside the bumper. Take those off, take that off, don't need it. I need two screwdrivers to do that and squeeze it in the other way. Oop. And now if I can hit it. Oh, see that? There's something inside. Nope. Looks better already. Just minimized. I see what's happening. We're bunching up. That, that. I just bumped you guys, sorry. Looking better, but not enough. Yeah, I'm at the maximum inside. Uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking if we open it up again. Ah, oh, yeah. Somebody put a bolt in there. It's the mounting bolt for these things, and it's very long. It's sticking out an inch past. If I can get the plasma in there, I'm gonna blow it off, but then I'll ruin it.
If I can slip in there with a long brand new zip blade, cut it off. If I cut more material off of here to try and flare this part out to meet that, more difficult. However, if I cut some material off of here, push it in, I can blend this in by squeezing it. It'll work out better that way. I'm going to take off half an inch tape. You guys see the tape? inch at a time. That shape is getting close. You can sight through to the other one. See how much it sticks out? I think if we go one more time, that's gotta go in like that. That's hitting there. I think we can go take off a little bit more. I'll kneel on that later. Yes. Like I'm smacking this and I haven't caved that in. Whatever hit that hit it pretty darn hard. That's it. This is lining up with that plane, not the whole thing, but this part here is lining up with that plane of center section. Now we're going to have to tuck all this in, blend it, cut it, all that stuff. What if we put an exhaust port in here and just take this piece out? Nah. I'll put the exhaust right here and right here and we're going to go into the body or into the bumper a little bit just so it doesn't hang down. Got to make sure we clearance everything. We've got a frame member right there. Yeah. Okay, we're going to have to drop the bumper once we do that side and adjust these flanges so that that tucks in, rolls in. <clears throat> oh, why did I do that for? I needed that tape. Getting ahead of myself. Because we need to bend this. Don't know how yet.
Maybe a little bit of heat. We'll see. It's gonna sit up in there just like that. And we'll have our little lights there and there, or one in the middle. We'll see, there's room in the middle. That's gonna look good. Have to roll this in. Don't like sharp corners. It's gonna look really good right there. UMC motor. That's the bumper sticker. Okay. Let's get you guys off the tripod. Let's take a look at this. That's the original one over there, it's sticking out. And this is the new one, rolled in. Now we're way below the body, that's gotta move up. I mentioned something is off with this thing. So we're gonna figure out what that is. You take some dimensions from the tail light down, from the points down, see what's going on. I know the body work is correct because that, the structure, nothing was mangled there. So something's up with the bumper. We'll be taking that off to finalize this. Right now, uh, I think that's gotta tuck in that little bit more. You see this bumper here, this point is lining up with the bodywork a little better. So we come up, that should work in together. All right, let me cut that side apart make it look like this and trim up a little more of this material to where we can actually do something with it. See? That'll roll in really well. We have a trunk lid to do yet. Huh. Almost forgot about that. Getting close, guys. To some, this might look like a block of wood or a piece of kindling. In this case, it's a thumper. Instead of using a mallet or a steel sledgehammer like this, this just gives it a gentle bump. We're not after moving mountains, just a little bit. Good. Check out the gaps. I think that's going to be good. Let's bolt this up. Okay. And have a look at it. That's good. This bumper was never meant to fit up tight up against the underside of this tail light. We need to dremel this hole a little bit, bring it up so that the gap resembles this one over here. This one's a lot tighter, a lot nicer. We do only have one bolt in place, so that's, that one bolt is twisting the bracket down a little bit, but that's coming in really close. Uh, it's been a little while, probably a couple hours twisting and moving and just bumping things around until we have a nice gap down from the tail light to the bottom of the bumper. See that? So now we're gonna have to take and pull this bumper off and I'll show you why. Up inside, you can probably just see it. See that bracket? Up in here. That's preventing me, come on right there, from squeezing these sides in and mating it up with that corner piece. We've also nipped the bottom, tucked it up, radiusing this up this way. And on the driver's side, well, we have to finish cutting that out. The gap, it's a little bit tighter at the top than it is at the bottom. And like I mentioned, we only have one bolt and it's torquing. I can do this with, hey, see that? It's torquing the bumper up. So I wanna get the bottom bolt in on the bracket, which is down in there, and there should be two of them. That's gonna adjust that. Now there's some weird stuff happening with this body. See the gap here? See how it, it's really wide at the top and it comes down tighter? 
it's the opposite on the other side. So I've been chasing that, trying to figure out what's going on. Driver, or passenger side, it's pretty good. A little wider there, not bad there. And here is very consistent. But I've been trying to chase down this side here. And the only thing I can think of is when all this was cut apart, uh, things moved. That's it. So we might be able to bump it from the inside. I don't know, but that's gonna throw the tail light. It, it's weird. Like the quality back in the 50s, they didn't really pay attention to gaps too much. They were nice, but they weren't perfect. Uh, sometimes you could drive a truck through some of those gaps. The tail light needs to come up a little bit. And actually by moving that tail light up like that, on the foam, there's only one fastener at the top, it increases the space on the bottom, just like the passenger side. This side here is drawn up a little bit tighter. Yeah, little things that I would have to look at. So, after spending all that time fitting this bumper, we're gonna take it off. We'll get that driver's side corner cut up. We'll get this onto the vise and roll this half inch leg over. I could have left a little bit more I guess, in hindsight, to help roll it over, but that's fine. We'll use that guy right there. And well, maybe a little bit lighter. You know, we want control. We don't want to bash it. So we'll just brace it on the vise, roll it over. We'll try without heat. Here, uh, we still have to do a little bit of finagling to get it to fit up nice. But the bottom of the car, that matches up. Not too bad, you can come up a smidgen. Like, I mean, eighth of an inch smidgen so that it flows up into the bumper. I didn't want to cut that and move it up. I'm going to just uh, move the whole bumper up because we can tighten this side up. Just like that side over there. Once that tail light goes up. There's a lot of variables, as I mentioned. Here, I already made that correction. So, Sharpie line that flows up into the bumper into the tail. Okay, let's get this bumper off. Now, where are my bolts? A tailor fitting bumpers to a car is not an easy feat. It's not bragging or anything, but be prepared to spend a lot of hours. We're not even close to being done. Because we have all that to do yet. Fit that in nice. Remember the one side that was six inches, that was five and a half? That's a sheet metal work. See, that's where it used to sit, right there. Nope. A little higher, it's settled down. That's where it used to sit. One bumper. Let's put this on the bench. Yeah, we don't need the tape. There's this tape. And come on. Let's try a lighter hammer. See what happens. Not bad, but uh, we'll move up a little bit. I want to create a nice soft roll up underneath. If I tried that with a dolly, I'd be bouncing all over the place. Wow. 
or should I say ow. It reverberates sometimes. It's coming along nice. This isn't the first time we've formed or worked with bunkers. Uh, for a custom 40 Ford sedan delivery four door, we built a set of bumper, a front bumper, out of 18, or out of 18, I wish, out of 1 8 material. That was fun. That was done by hand with that guy and a rubber pad. Put some pictures up while I'm hammering this out. take these bumpers and media blast them. The back sides, they used to be chrome, but it's all rusted up now. So we'll get a media blasted, cleaned up, strip them down like a chicken bone. Now I have to roll it up one more time and finish, straighten that out. I guess inspect the top, see how that looks. Oh, that's nice. Yes, very cute. Oops, damaged the chrome a little bit. Ha ha. I need to check. In terms of the roll, the ends had to be tucked a little more. Hoppa! Trick is to get in there. I think that's going to be it. There we have it. I'm going to touch it up a little bit here. Actually, what I was thinking of doing is rolling this a little bit as well. Introduce that into that new surface instead of having a sharp edge. Yeah, let's do that. It's going. We'll file that out, smooth it all out nice. Well, that's going to be it for rolling that flange. See? So that will get us going for now. This is a little bit softer than this side. I have to address that. I'm going to soak these bolts. We're going to be taking these off. I'm going to replace this bolt, this carriage bolt, with a stud so that the outside is smooth. You don't see any fasteners holding this bumper to the car. We might need some heat, we'll see. In the meantime, we'll go on to other areas of this build. Good. Again. Alright guys, so I got the bumper all disassembled. This is the driver's side bumper end. I got the wedge removed as well as this mounting bracket. This is the lower one that sat in here that was giving us all the grief earlier. Uh, we had a bolt sticking through here on the passenger side. I ended up trying to cut it off. It was still wasn't enough to do what we needed to do. So I removed it entirely. It had some 
pretty big spot welds in here just to, holding it in. So this is gone for now. we we'll probably put it back later because we don't want this thing pivoting on one bolt. And yes, let's start trying to form this into the shape we need. Easier said than done. Oh well, yeah, we have to do one more thing, one more cut. Because when this rolls up, we're gonna be shorter than the end. So I also need to take a wedge out of here, sort of like that, on both sides to bring the end up. This is gonna match up with the quarter panel. This is gonna transition into this point. And we'll probably have to hammer the heck out of that point to reshape it to flow in the way we need it to flow. We're going from a square point to a radius. Going from a peak to, I'm gonna take and soften this up a bit. Remove that peak because now it's a different angle, different plane, and uh, we don't really have to follow that peak that comes down from the tail light. Here we go. This is not gonna work. That doesn't look too bad. This cut has gotten tight again, so that's not good. And we're not quite down to where we have to be over here, which uh, we can work with. So I'm gonna take and cut out some more material. And I should take a dimension off the passenger side piece and see how close it comes together. See, I did this one, and this one took most of the morning. Trial and error, fitting, getting the curves right. But we're not gonna show you too much until we get that one done. Then we'll lay them side by side. That's the penetrating oil smoking. All right, nice big hole. Let's get it fitted up. Wow. Can't squeeze it. Got some bounce to it. Gonna watch your forehead. Wouldn't that look funny? Guy gets ball peen hammer stuck in forehead. Okay, we're gonna put a tack here. Work that in. Squeeze that in, tack it, work it. I don't know why I do this. Perhaps we should flatten that out. See, so when I bent it down, points came up. That's better.
Okay. Tech time. Okay, that's flowing in. So we're gonna have to bump this from the inside out, reach in there with something, drive it down. But I need to get some good tacks on here. Let's uh, double check it. If I try pounding it on the vise, I'll end up bending this up. With these sides tacked, now we can start forming. Forming some more. Slippery. It's not one flat surface on this part, and this is rounded, so I just gotta glance off. So I'm just trying my luck. Yeah. Very good. Now, see? blending in quite well. So now we can take care of the bottom. Bring that up, bring this down.
There we have the other point formed up. What I'm going to do is work this in, smooth it out, weld it, and finish it. And I'll bring you guys in when it's done. The high spot there.
went ahead and found some shorter bolts for two of the brackets. The ones that were there are pretty, pretty messed up. Rusted basically into oblivion. You can see how bad this bolt is. It's, I barely got it out. So I'm gonna change them around. The th threads on the inner shot had about half an inch of thread there and then nothing. So got some fresh bolts, gonna put them in. And leave these brackets off for now. In case we need to make any changes. We get the bumper up above. And we will get, uh oh, I forgot to get this out. Am I quick enough? Nope, not today. Maybe tomorrow. Uh, let's clamp this in the vise, or at least set it up in the vise. I'll get two of the brackets in, the ones that are still mounted inside this bumper end, bumperette. Uh, I can hold my tongue right today. I'll probably have to get new bolts for here too. These are pretty, pretty chewed. So we do have some leeway on them to tighten them up and adjust them on the car. You know, I should get that bracket in, but hmm. Be nice to get the bracket in, inside, bolted to here, and tack it somehow. But there's not that much room, so um, we'll leave that for now. Pinch it just a little bit. I'm going to snug it up, but not have it so tight that I can't move it. And then we will kind of position them where we need to be. Maybe we can get in there with some kind of ratchet or box end or something. So we'll leave it on two bolts for now. Uh, might be a mistake, I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Just finished cleaning up those pieces. Uh, air hose. rotating a little bit but it'll give us an idea so we've got the witness lines of where they used to be I'm going by that too loose there, one bolt there. We've got our pins to help us support the bumper. Uh, should I take the taillights off? I think we'll be okay. I think it's a bit lighter. Up we go. Got it. I want to make sure I get all the threads. Run it by hand as much as as far as you can. And then 
Let's get the ratchet out. There is no way that we can adjust these bumperettes, that's what I'm calling them, on the car once the bumper's on. Uh, so we're gonna have to maybe use some masking tape. Probably not. Is it upside down? Right and left is right. I think what's wrong is rotated on the bumper. See the space here? It shouldn't be that way. I'm just curious to see how it's gonna look. All that work we put into it. I don't know. Something seems a little fishy. Kind of wonder how they did it in the factory. See how low we are? Now I tuck that up. Oh, look at that. Something just shifted in a good way. That's better. That's even better. Uh -huh. Ratchet. See, we still have the issue of one bolt pulling it down. Pretty flush with the end. Ah, uh, yes. Now, let's see what we can do with this one. This one's really cockeyed. And low. How low can you go? That jump. Okay, so what's happening is I've got the bottom bolts to the frame done up tight, and that's rotated the bumper outward. I need to get the two top bolts in to rotate it up into place. But before we get all those bolts in, I want to make sure that the shape and the position and all that looks good. In case we have to cut this apart, it's not too late. You know, we haven't finished them yet. We can always modify them or bump them with a hammer and a big hammer and big dolly. But in any case, once that's positioned where I want it to be, we'll take it off, bolt, get those brackets and bolt them to where they need to be, and then put the bumper on, get all the bolts in, and it'll, it'll rotate that. Uh, I just want to see how close we can get it at this point. And here, it's actually quite nice. Yep, 
Yeah. Yeah. The bumper bracket goes through the bolt goes through the bumper bracket end through the bumper and through here. And right now it's not it's kind of sprung. So we're gonna have to fix that by getting that bracket in and getting that bolt in. I think I've said that three times now, but you know, that's thought process as you're fitting something. It's not like on TV where it just boom, it fits or it doesn't fit and oh no, that all the drama, drama that follows. We're not going to paint yet. We don't hit that. Okay, we're gonna leave it at this point. I need to stand back, take a look. I'll get you guys back, show you the new angles. And like, we didn't take out too much, it's just a little bit. See that? We're down a little bit past the bottom. That wasn't like that before. So we'll reposition that bumper end in the right location. We'll get that other bracket in and that'll flow right up and around. You see, we've minimized the height of that fin from being all the way down to the bottom corner to the, just that, that, that segment right there. And then we start returning back down to the front. If I could step back another 10, 15 feet, that'd be awesome. I can't, I've got the parts rack all set up for this car for finalist or pre-assembly, I should say, final assembly, I wish. And again, we're down the same distance right here, which when we raise this, that three eighths of an inch, that'll slide up in place where it needs to be, and that's gonna look good. Yep, I like it. We're not cutting anything apart. All right, guys, uh, we could wrap this video up here, or, we can go to the front and adjust the front bumper brackets so we're not sitting on blocks and zip ties. Yeah, really important. I've got this bracket just sitting here. It needs to be cut and bolted into place. And then we can bring the bumper in and maybe put a few tacks on the inside. We can still get in because we've got this big gaping hole at the top so that we can start modifying the front bumper. Now this one is going to involve a little more work because this end has to be trimmed off so that it, in, it flows in line with the wheel arch down. Let's see if we can get around to a better angle. Wheels in the way. So you see how far back it sticks? We have to chop that off, roll the end in. Once that's fitted there, and narrowed up because it does stick out a little bit much. I think it shifted to one side. Yeah, there we go. Look at that gap right there. It's not the same, so it has to move over. So we'll cut the center before we weld then onto the brackets. We'll put clamps on temporarily, trim at the ends, get everything fitting to the car the way it should be, and then we'll go ahead and run in this top piece here. But before we get into the bumper, uh, we're going to probably jump and do some grill work. So you might see the grill, you might see the bumper. I'm not sure which one's going to come up first. Uh, got the wire frame in place. It's looking good. Center line, that's important. And I talked about the headlights, modifying the headlights. It ain't going to happen at all. Don't worry. They're staying as they are. The bezel was around here, I think it's on the shelf now. Uh, I talked about kind of pulling, pulling them back. We're not gonna do that. Without the bumper, without the grill, they look like they were going on forever. I've seen that before somewhere, it looked kind of ridiculous. Here, with the bumper and the grill in place, everything's gonna flow in together. Chrysler designers knew what they were doing when they did the headlights on this car because they have a nice curve upward See that? They flow into the bezel really nice. Everything has a beautiful shape up front here. The hood, that bird, we're gonna be deleting that bird. I know I just threw that in there out of nowhere, but I'm liking the look of the front with that streamlined hood. As for the bird, we're not gonna throw it out. We're gonna put it in up underneath. Make a little birdhouse. 
Okay, let's cut that bracket, bolt it into place, and then we'll get on to modifying the bumper halves. All right, so here we have 15 pounds of bumper bracket. We're gonna shave about two pounds by chopping it off flush with the end of that. This bracket needed to support the overrunner, the part over the license plate in the center, the wings on the sides, all that extra weight that we've shaved off. And we're also gonna shave some more weight by tailoring it, trimming it up, and like shrinking it down to fit the body better. So we don't need all three bolts. It had three bolts bolting this bracket to the frame. Chop it off, wrong with two bolts, done. And uh, in terms of punching more holes to reduce weight, it's really not necessary. You're not gonna save that much. So just looking at it, it's got two rivets here, nice and tight, nothing's loose, that's all good. So we'll just chop that off and get this bolted up in place. Almost like a witching wand. You guys ever experienced using one of those? If you have, put in the comments. I've used the 90 degree witching wands with a little tube on them. Interesting experience when you're looking for underground pipes, culverts, whatever. Uh, they work. There you go, catch. Use that for something else. That's what they call spring steel. Uh, I should clean that up. Now I think before I get into actually modifying or doing anything with this bumper, we're gonna run that grill in. Quiet. Now these brackets, because we flipped the bumper, also have to sit upside down. Yeah. Got the bumper brackets on, I'll have to tighten them up after. We're gonna reposition this, but we're just gonna leave this as it is. I need to take care of these creases here, pound them out so that we have the proper curvature on the front of this car. Right now it's kind of tweaked. This car was hit or hit something. Uh, back right corner, this bumper here got pushed and there's a couple other indications of damage. Phony cars could talk. They tell one heck of a story. It's almost all the way in. I probably can get the bolts in. We don't have to worry about replacing the carriage bolts because we're gonna roll the stud on the inside and smooth the outside. Okay, next time you see this, we'll have something formed up here in the front.